hello today hello today we going to talk about a new concept from guptri we are going to talk about the concept of cyclic group also somewhere it's also called it's cyclic group so basically cyclic group or cyclic group so we are going to talk about that concept so let's start so suppose we have a group so first we going to solve this problem so let let g be a group and we are taking an element and a is an element is an element of the group g of the group g now what we going to do we consider a subset so we consider a subset h which is the collection of all integral power of the elements n so if i write in this way so a, n is any integer so if i write more in detail so this is the collection of all uh, dot 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 minus a cube minus a to the power minus 2 a to the minus 1 a to the power 0 a a square a cube and so on in this way the we take the collections of all elements and we form the set h so here we a few more things you have to know here a to the power 0 is the identity elements of the group g a to the power 0 the identity elements we assume that uh, when we are talking about group theory then a to the power 0 the identity element of the group of g so this is the identity elements of g so if we have we go what we going to check we going to check h is a subgroup or not so our motivations we claim that basically we claim that claim that h is a subgroup h is a subgroup of g so what we going to do we going to show that h satisfies all the three properties of that net is necessary and sufficient conditions so first of all you can easily see that a to the power 0 because a to the power 0 belongs to the set h so h contains the identity elements so h contains the identity elements of the group g and which is also the identity elements of h h contain the identity element of g that is the first thing next thing is we have to show that if two elements x and y belongs to h we have to show that after taking composition this also have to be in the set h now here are few more things you have to understand so just let me write because any element of h is of the form some a to the power integral power so a to the power some n n is any integer because x and y belongs to h and any element of h is of the form a to the power some integral power so x obviously some elements of the form a to the power p and obviously y is also an elements of the form a to the power q where p and q are integers p and q are integers because each and every elements of h is of this form a to the power 
some power a to the power some power of n sorry a to the power some integers n so x is a to the power r integers y is also some a into q a, a to the power q so q is another integer so p and q are integers so let me erase the upper portion so if i do this so what we get what is x compose y so let me erase this part so x compose y is x compose y is a to the power p compose a to the power q and we know that from the integral formula or the index formula of group theory that this is a to the power p plus q now p is an integer q is an another integer and then p plus q obviously an integers so p belongs to z q belongs to z and we know that p plus q obviously belongs to z so x compose y is a to the power some integral power so obviously x compose y belongs to h because h is the collection of all such integral power of a so x compose y belongs to the set h so second conditions of that necessary and sufficient condition also satisfied so let's check for the third condition third condition is if we have any elements x belongs to h then their inverse then the inverse of that elements also belongs to h so third condition is let me check out the third condition so we have x belongs to h we have to show we have to show that x to the power minus 1 which is x inverse also belongs to h now because x belongs to h so x is a to the power some p p is an integer because every we have talk about that because every element of h is of the form a to the power some integer so p is belongs to z next what we know from that then you can clearly see that x in bus will be a to the power minus p why because if i take x compose x in bus it gives us a to the power p compose a to the power minus p and which gives us p minus p so we get a to the power 0 which is the identity elements so x to the power minus 1 that's how we define is an inverse of the element x and because p belongs to and p is an integer minus p obviously an integer so x inverse belongs to h so we have seen that all the three property of that necessary and sufficient condition are satisfied for the elements of h so h is a subgroup of g so let me erase this first and write that down so what we get we get that for any elements a belongs to the group g if i take the collection of all integral power of that elements that's form a subgroup of the group g so let me write that so here we have h is the collection of all the elements all the integral power of the elements a which is something like that a square a cube and so on or if i write in more compact form this is a to the power n n belongs to the set of integers so h is a subgroup of the group g and here we have a name for this subgroup so this group is called so this group this group is called is called the group the group generated 
so the group generated generated by the element by the element a so for the elements a we can form such a set and we have seen that this set is a subgroup of g and this subgroup is called the group generated by the elements a and we're going to use the notation so h basically the group generated by a denoted by in this way so this is the notation and this is basically called the cyclic this is one of our cyclic subgroup of the group g so h is a cyclic subgroup of g so this type of subgroup of the group g is called a cyclic subgroup of the group g so what are the cyclic subgroup of the group g if we, we just take an elements of the group and what we do we take the collection of all integral power of that elements and we have seen that that the collection of all integral powers is a subgroup of g this type of subgroup is called a cyclic subgroup of g generated by the elements a so for different value of a we get different cyclic subgroup of the group g but we have a question why the name cyclic that's the very important thing so here are the few things you have to observe so first of all let me erase this part and talk about that why the name is cyclic so let me erase that first so suppose we have a group the name so here is the observation or note why the name cyclic suppose g is a group g be a group and we take and suppose we are taking an elements a belongs to z and order of the elements so suppose order of a is k then if i take the group subgroup h and take the integral power so suppose we start with a to the power 0 so a to the power 0 is the identity elements then next a x square in this way if i go a to the power minus k minus 1 and we know that because the order of elements k so if the order of a is k then we know that a to the power k is again the identity elements of the group so a to the power k basically the a to the power 0 and a to the power k plus 1 becomes so a to the power k plus 1 is a to the power k compose a and a to the power k is a and we get e compose a we get the elements a so we have so a to the power a k gives a to the power 0 a to the power k plus 1 gives a similarly a to the power k plus 2 will be gives a square in this way we get a to the power k minus 1 and this process will be repeated again and again so that's why the name is cyclic so after some stage the elements are cyclically are repeating they are repeating all the elements are repeating in cyclic form so that's why the name is cyclic so for example if i take the elements uh, minus suppose we are take, talking about the elements a to the power minus 1 so a to the power minus 1 we know that the order a to the power minus 1 is basically same as a to the power so a to the power minus will be same as what so let's check uh, what is a to the power minus 1 so what we know a to the power k is e so then we can write k as k minus 1 or k minus 1 plus 1 equals to e so we can write a to the power k minus 1 into a equals to e so you can see that a to the power k minus 1 is the inverse of the element a 
बिकॉज द इनवर्स इज एन यूनिक सो ए टू दी पावर के माइनस वन इज बेसिकली ए टू दी पावर माइनस वन सो ए टू दी पावर माइनस वन बेसिकली ए टू दी पावर के माइनस वन सो अगेन आई एम जस्ट रिपीटिंग ए टू दी पावर के इक्वल टू ई वी राइट ए टू दी पावर के एस ए टू दी पावर के माइनस वन प्लस वन वी गेट ए टू दी पावर के माइनस वन कॉम्पोज ए इक्वल टू द आइडेंटिटी एलिमेंट्स द रिमेम्बर द रूल इफ वी हैव एन एलिमेंट्स एक्स इन द ग्रुप सच दैट इफ आई कॉम्पोज विथ ए एंड आफ्टर कॉम्पोजिशन इफ वी गेट द आइडेंटिटी एलिमेंट ई ऑल्सो a with the compose with x we get the identity element e then x is called the inverse of the elements a so x is the inverse a to the power minus 1 of the elements so similarly if you look over here so a to the power k minus 1 is x over here and a to the power k minus 1 is the inverse of a so a to the power minus 1 is a to the power k minus 1 Similarly, you can easily check that a to the power minus two will be a to the power k minus two. A to the power minus three will be a to the power k minus three in this way. So, if we go in a negative integral power of a, the all the elements are actually again uh, repeating in cyclic form. So, after that, h will be become only the set. So, h is. Only the collection, so whole is it will be the collection of only if we order of the elements is k, the only element of H will be the identity elements and a is square up to a to the power k minus one, and after a to the power k minus one, all the elements will going to be repeated in some cyclic in cyclic form. That's why the name is cyclic. cyclic subgroup the name cyclic is came from over here now you may ask me the questions if the order of elements is not the finite so order of element is not a finite elements then why uh, then if we have so let me write that down if the order of a is not finite so which means order of a is infinite so that means For the elements, no elements are going to repeat. So h will be obviously going on in this way. So a to the power zero, a square, and so on. The no elements will be repeat again if the order of a is infinite. So then, why the name is cyclic again? Is the name is cyclic because this is the generalization of this concept. This is the generalization of this concept. so that's why the name cyclic subgroup also we can use that the name cyclic this is the only the concept so a generalization not the particular form they will the elements will going to repeats the element not going to repeats but the name suggests that this is more generalization something the, the concept of this though this is the generalization of the concept that's why the name remain the same that is also the cyclic subgroup okay